And the Lord said to Noah, Come you and all your house into the ark, for you have I seen righteous before me in this generation. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth in the six hundredth year of Noah's life in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. That is excerpts from Genesis chapter 7, the ancient story of the great flood. Most Christians believe this occurred in the past, however we know it's most likely an encoded prophecy about the future, and there are four reasons that is likely. First, because in Genesis 9-11 it says that never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth, and this means that after the great flood there will never be another flood. But there is clearly a flood at the end of Daniel's timeline because the book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 26 tells us the end shall be with a flood. So if Daniel's flood is a literal flood, then this would have to mean that the story of Noah's flood is not history but prophecy. We do know that Daniel's flood is a literal flood of water and here's why. Daniel gives a timeline of our history, not his history but ours, as it exists in 2018. The timeline starts in 605 BC, and it's been playing out as written for over 2,000 years. The most recent fulfillments were of the Daniel 9 prophecy, the exact prophecy that involves the flood. And the fulfillments of the Daniel 9 prophecy line up with the fulfillments of Jeremiah's 70 years. According to Daniel 9.25, the 70 Shabuah start when the commandment goes forth to restore Jerusalem. The United Nations put forth the commandment in November 1947, and it went forth on May 14, 1948. Jeremiah 25.12 says that Babylon the Great will be destroyed after 70 years are accomplished of the nations around Jerusalem serving the king of Babylon. And Revelation 17.11 specifically tells us that the final king of Babylon refers to the beast, which is the eighth king the United Nations. So, the Daniel 9 prophecy fulfillment began at the same time the Jeremiah 25 fulfillment began, from November 1947 to May 1948. And Jeremiah clarifies that at the end of 70 years, Babylon will be destroyed. And what does Jeremiah say will destroy Babylon? A flood. In Jeremiah 51.42, we're told Babylon will be destroyed by the waves. The sea is come up upon Babylon. She is covered with a multitude of waves. So, Babylon will be destroyed by the waves of the sea. And that's clarified even more in Revelation 18.21. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. So, the destruction of Babylon is caused by a great stone that falls from heaven and hits the sea. The same stone is described in Daniel 2.34. You saw till that a stone was cut out without hands which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. So, the stone hits the feet of the image which occur in the very end. The feet of the image occur during the time of the final beast in Daniel 7. Daniel 7.11 says the beast will be destroyed by a burning flame. So the stone is a burning stone. That burning stone is also mentioned in Revelation 8.10. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. This is the same falling star that causes the sky to go dark in Revelation 9. This burning stone falls while the seven trumpets are sounding. The seven trumpets sound at the same time. They do not sound one at a time. They sound all at once. And we know that because the seven plagues 
match the seven trumpets. And Revelation 18, 8 through 10 tells us the seven plagues occur in one day. And not only in one day, but in one hour. So the seven trumpets sounding all at once in one hour is the impact of the asteroid. And all of those connections are how we know that Daniel's flood is a literal flood of water because it connects to Jeremiah and Revelation, which both clarify that the flood is caused by a burning stone from heaven that will hit the sea and the sea will come up on Babylon and Babylon will be destroyed by both the waves from the sea and the burning from the stone itself. So Daniel's literal flood of water will destroy Babylon, which covers the whole world in the end. But Genesis 9-11 says that after the great flood, never again will a flood destroy the earth. So these are the first two reasons that indicate that the story of Noah's flood is Daniel's flood. It refers to the future destruction of Babylon the Great. The next reason is that Noah's flood occurs while the Nephilim are on the earth. Genesis 6 1 tells us this occurs when humans begin to multiply on the earth. The multiplying of the human population did not occur in the last 10,000 years until 1927 through 1960 when the population growth went exponential. That's the third clue that Noah's flood occurs in the end time. The fourth clue is in Luke 17, 26 through 30, where it says that the end time event will be just like it was in the days of Noah. They married wives. And it will also be like it was in the days of Lot. It will rain fire and brimstone from heaven. That rain, therefore, is the rain of Noah's flood. The rain of fire and brimstone from the asteroid that will hit the sea and cause a flood. This is actually depicted in the recent movie titled Noah. It's very quick, but you can see it in the movie trailer. It's an asteroid. Genesis 7 says that rain will last for 40 days and 40 nights. In Matthew 24, 29, and 30, it says the Son of Man will appear when the stars fall, and that's when the sky will go dark. That's a reference to Revelation 9. The star from heaven opens the pit, and the smoke from the pit darkens the sky. Matthew 24 says it will occur immediately after the tribulation of the days, which are the 1260 days, which represent 1260 years. And several ancient scholars believed that tribulation of the days would be ending between 2014 and 2018. So the tribulation of the days and the 70 years of Jeremiah are ending at the same time in 2018. So those are the four major reasons Noah's flood appears to refer to the fall of Babylon. First, the Bible says that after the great flood of Noah, there will never be another flood. Second, Daniel tells us a flood will happen in the end time. And that is a literal flood involving water and waves covering the land. Third, the Bible tells us the great flood of Noah occurs when the sons of God are on the earth. And that is at the time the human population multiplies, which did not happen until this generation. And fourth, the Bible says the final destruction of the beast and Babylon will be just like the days of Noah. In other words, it will be just like the Great Flood. So you can see the first two biblical points seem to contradict one another. If there's no other flood after the Great Flood, then how can another literal flood occur in the end time? It doesn't seem to make sense. However, there is one way that both scriptures can be correct, and that is that Noah's flood is the flood of Daniel. They are one and the same event. And while many believe the story of Noah was a past event, it's actually a prophecy about the future, just like many of the other biblical stories. That's the only way that I can see that both points can be correct. There's one flood, 
and it hasn't happened yet. And the third and fourth points seem to corroborate that. But that's not all. There's also the timing of the fig tree that connects to all of this and the marriage to the sons of God, which Genesis also tells us occurs during the final generation. And notice Genesis 7-1 also mentions that generation. So in verse 11, it says the rain will start on the 17th day of the second month and will last 40 days and nights until roughly the end of the third month. And in 2018, this appointed time will start on May 31st and end on July 12th. The second month started on the new moon and first crescent of May 15th and 16th. The 17th day of the second month is on the window of May 31st through June 2nd. And the 40th day is on the window of July 10th through the 12th. So within that window of Noah's reign, we also have ancient Shavuot on the window of June 18th through the 20th, and the 24th day of the ninth month in the Southern Hemisphere on the window of July 6th through the 8th, which is a reference to Haggai 2, 20 through 23. These appointed times happen every year, but 2018 is a significant year because both the 70 years and the 1260 years are ending this year. For more information on the ancient prophetic timeline, please see the playlist Bibles Countdown to the Meteorite and Rescue linked here. Thank you so much to those who make this work possible. If you like this video, please consider providing support. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you later.